introduction. Thank you for being here so early. I, I really thought that there would be crickets chirping this early in the morning. Everybody does realize you're in Vegas, right? 7.30 in the morning, you should still be in the casinos partying, I would think. But anyhow, thank you very much for coming. As Dr. Delgado said, I'm going to talk to you about something that you probably have a great deal of difficulty getting your patients involved in, and that's exercise. Doesn't seem like anyone likes to exercise, but as we all know, it's a critical component in making sure we live the healthiest, most optimum life. This one, this lecture that I'm prepared here is basically to talk about exercise as far as the prevention and the care, treatment, and prevention of various diseases and disorders. Exercise and nutrition, however, goes hand in hand, so the things the previous speaker had to say about nutrition are also a critical component of what we want to do for patient care. So one of the things I'd like to convince you all is that, number one, you need an exercise program for your own sake, for your own health, in order for you to have optimal performance. But secondarily, I'd also like you to coerce, motivate, threaten, exhort, bribe, whatever it takes to get your patients involved in an exercise program because it is critical for your patient care that they also are physically active and eat healthy. Uh, just to uh, make mention of, as far as exercise goes, um, just want to mention that my older daughter has a uh, tennis scholarship to the University of Tampa. My younger daughter is right now in an appointment with our congresswoman. She's being recruited by the tennis coach at the United States Military Academy to play tennis for West Point. And both my daughters started training when they were minus three months old. So for those of you that have heard myths about children shouldn't strength train, children shouldn't lift weights, that's a myth. When my wife was pregnant, I would feel around until I could find a hand. And you know if you push, they push back. You've done this before, right? Everybody? Not your yes if you've done this before? So we would do 15 repetitions on the left hand, 15 repetitions on the right hand, 15 repetitions on the right foot, 15 repetitions on the left work, left foot. Now, of course, as a trainer, my job was done, so I'd roll over and go to sleep. But I think you know what the results are, right? Now the kid's going like this all night long. But I did my job. Now, the law of unintended consequences the other myth that you hear about strength training is strength training stunts your growth. You've heard that myth? Yes? Well, the law of unintended consequences is both of my teenage daughters, much to my chagrin, are taller than I am. Ladies, you probably don't know what that means to a guy. This is a testosterone problem. Gentlemen, you understand, right? And then when they put on high heels, I, I feel like I am... Uh, a member of the Lollipop Guild. So um, I will also try and dispel some of the myths about strength training today. Uh, we have some key questions. Are, are adults in the United States of America getting enough exercise? I think the answer is obvious. I think everyone in this room knows that we're in the middle of an obesity epidemic. And for those of you that are not from the United States of America, we would now say that there is an obesity pandemic taking place across the United States. For those of you that haven't seen the, the latest statistics, what we're looking at is, even though the United States still holds a record as the most obese population in the world, just another record we've claimed, the reality is, is that the Chinese have the fastest growing rate of obesity. And if they keep going, they're going to catch up to us very, very rapidly here. India is now number three as far as obesity rate goes. So the obesity epidemic is taking place worldwide. And one of the major causes of that, I believe, is technology. A hundred years ago here in the United States, did anybody need to belong to a health club? No, because we all worked hard. We had to farm, we had to do heavy manual labor to survive. Unfortunately today, Americans, according to all the studies we've seen, are still the hardest working people in the world. The problem is, what are your patients doing when they're working hard today? Okay, so a couple people bend over and start doing this. Correct. Where they're sitting at their desk, they're, they're slumped over a computer keyboard, and they're typing away at their computer all day long. Are children getting enough exercise? 
Another scary fact we have out there is that not only do we have an obesity epidemic among the adult population, but unfortunately, we have an obesity epidemic amongst our children. So there are projections out there that if the trend keeps going the way it's going right now, by the year 2015, 50% of all school-aged children in the United States of America will be clinically obese. Now, you've already seen the ramifications, all the different diseases, disabilities, and disorders associated with lack of physical activity and poor nutrition. But when your adult patient is fully grown and all their physiological systems are mature, they can handle the obesity much better than a child can. When a child is obese, there is virtually no hope that any of their physiological systems are going to reach full maturity. They will be permanently retarded mentally, emotionally, spiritually, artistically, certainly financially. You've seen the statistics on that. Obese people don't make as much as fit people do. So one of the things we have to do is we have to encourage people to begin exercise programs to the maximum extent possible. This is just a few of the diseases, disabilities, and dysfunctions associated with lack of physical activity and poor nutrition habits, the sedentary lifestyle. And I don't have time in the 30 minutes that I have before you today to go through exercise prescriptions for each and every one of these. But as Dr. Delgado mentioned, I am the chairman for ACASP. When uh, Dr. Bob Goldman approached me about putting together a program to teach doctors about exercise and nutrition prescription, I was all in because I firmly believe that you as physicians still have the authority in our society to motivate, encourage, influence, order people to exercise.